Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining to this session. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me the second time to be part of this uh, conference. And uh, using this chance, I want to congratulate to uh, Hungarian Soft, uh, Software Testing Forum uh, with the 10-year university. Uh, today we'll go we'll talk about um, one topic uh, about building in-house and scalable mobile device lab and i want uh, first of all i want to like introduce myself uh, i'm sarkis uh, working at the pixart uh, as a quality uh, insurance director um, if you still didn't have a chance to explore pixart just want to um, say that the PixArt is the mobile and the web uh, photo editing application. We uh, create the application which allows our uh, users to um, create awesome storytelling. So uh, if it's interesting for you, you can just check it out. Um, let's start the, the discussion about the topic uh, of the device lab. Um, Today we'll talk about um, why we actually built a smartphone lab and um, what is the requirement, what the ecosystem that we actually created for having this automation mobile lab, uh, how we set up, uh, how we are organizing and maintaining uh, the devices. Uh, we'll talk about how we set up the device for the automation run. Uh, we'll uh, see how the tests are running actually, and uh, in the end, we'll have some time for the question and answer. So, beside the main challenges that we have in the um, quality engineering and the testing, uh, in the mobile uh, in the mobile case, we have uh, different uh, challenges here, which is which which are making uh, testing process uh, more complicated and uh, with the more challenges. One of them is that device uh, screen size and um, operation system fragmentation uh, to create, uh, to, to cover all, all these cases. Another is one is uh, localization. Um, for example, for the Pixar, we have more than 30 languages uh, that we are supporting and um, it makes uh, like big challenge to test the application every time with these all, all, all languages, uh, at least to make sure that these uh, translations didn't break anything. Um, another is the performance as we have um, too many devices and um, uh, like um, too many um, uh, parameter, uh, parameterized devices. Uh, we need to pay attention on the performance, how application is performing on a different type of the devices and different type of the operation systems. Uh, for the mobile testing, we, uh, we need to pay attention on the network because uh, we could have different type of the network connections, like um, beside the Wi-Fi connection or LAN connection, we could have mobile network, roaming, online mode, offline mode, etc. Uh, and of course, there are a lot of um, mobile app tools that we are using for the testing and uh, it, the, the, the tool set itself is uh, really different from the, um, from the web or desktop application testings that makes uh, more complicated the testing in the mobile. So um, to solve some of the issues and uh, some of the challenges, uh, we come with a solution to create our own uh, device lab, uh, especially for the automation. What is the device lab is actually? Uh, this is the set of the collection of the mobile devices that are available for the testing apps and the services. Why we build actually this device lab? Beside the emulators and simulator testing, we really need to check uh, how application is behaving on the, on the physical device. Uh, another um, reason that we built uh, this uh, mobile lab is the um, uh, automation infrastructure creation. Basically, we customized the application enough uh, to make some services, um, uh, some service mocking uh, or other uh, this kind of them, uh, small uh, solutions for the automation, which makes the automation suite run um, uh, 
stable and um, uh, give uh, as uh, much as possible fast results to the development. We have a photo editor app. This makes the, um, and the testing more uh, complicated because uh, here we have a lot of visual changes and basically we need to uh, mainly pay attention on the visual bugs. Uh, uh, as we are working with the fo photos and the videos, we need to make sure that the visual um, uh, functionality uh, is working in a different screen size and the different operation systems. And the, finally, the uh, cost efficient. Um, basically, I would say that if you plan something short term, I'm not sure that um, like as a short term uh, project, I'm not sure that this solution will be cost efficient. But when we think about um, long-term investment for more than several years, uh, this solution becoming very um, uh, cost efficient. Um, and uh, based on our calculation on return on investment, we come up with this solution um, and, um, and uh, get the result that this solution for our company especially is cost efficient enough to start and um, use these um, mobile labs. Basically, uh, let's um, uh, let's talk about um, uh, our achievements that we uh, already have uh, the, with, with this uh, device lab. Um, as I already uh, talked about, it's the real device experience. So we are testing besides the emulator and simulator technology, we are testing on the real devices. Uh, use of the emulator and simulator technology is um, uh, sometimes could um, overtake some uh, some bugs, errors, or uh, false uh, false uh, reports. So um, we are uh, in, the, in the last stage of the acceptance testing, um, we are using real devices to find out this kind of the issues. If you ever work with the um, uh, iOS uh, automation, uh, of course, you face the provisioning issues. Um, basically, with this mobile lab solution, we created a script which is doing all this provisioning and certificate uh, installation automatically when you start the run. Um, there, there could be another solution of uh, gel breaking, but we choose to do everything with the provisioning and the certification uh, and everything, we, everything automated um, uh, with the device lab. Basically, when you run your OS, um, tests and uh, the provisioning and the certificates are missing on the device. The lab infrastructure itself installing everything, preparing the device before the run. Another achievement with, um, with this mobile farm is the, um, having the uh, secure private mobile devices for the testing. Um, basically, uh, everything is located in the office under the VPN and no one else has the access to these um, development machines and the technology. So we are performing very high and the secure environment for our testing. Another achievement is uh, that uh, by building this mobile lab, we come, uh, come up with a solution with um, understanding that we don't need to automate everything. Basically, the solution is very, exp uh, very expensive and um, uh, we are trying to keep the balance between the user flows and the functionalities and create as much um, uh, uh, and create as much effective test cases as possible to not um, uh, use uh, extra resources on this device and um, provide the maxim maximum out outcome. So um, let's go through the, um, uh, through the stack that we are actually using. Um, of course, we are using the Android and iOS operation systems. Uh, all the test cases and the framework that we are using um, is uh, written in Java. Uh, we come up with a solution to use Opium because of its um, cross-platform nature and um, based on the web driver protocol. This allows us actually to uh, write less code and run on the both platforms. Basically, as the application in our case is uh, more or less identical in the Android and iOS, uh, we have opportunity here to write um, one page object for both platforms uh, and just define the specific uh, selectors for every uh, platform and then um, 
uh, single methods for every action uh, will be the same. And for the continuous integration, um, we use Jenkins and all these um, tests and the infrastructure is connecting to the Jenkins and we are running these tests uh, in the Jenkins, env Jenkins environment in the parallel. From the hard hardware stack, we actually use Mac minis, which are becoming the nodes in the Jenkins. We use the powered USB hubs, which allowed us to, um, uh, to manage the the battery of the devices. Uh, we'll talk about this um, power management a bit later because this, this was one of the painful parts of the creating this uh, uh, farm. Of course, we are using iPhone devices and the cabling. Um, we are using Android phones uh, devices and the cabling. And we have several monitors which are allowing us to publish the reports and make it public within the company. The ecosystem overall looks uh, looks like this. Uh, so basically we have Jenkins and we have connected nodes to the Jenkins. We use one machine as the virtual node, which means um, for this node, we are running the um, uh, uh, automation tests on the simulators, on emulators only. And then um, we have um, several nodes uh, every node has connected iphone and and like uh, and android device and the uh, infrastructure is building the with with, um, uh, with paying attention a lot on the scaling so basically uh, when we want to scale this infrastructure we just connect another um, Mac machine as a node and within the 10 15 minutes we can set up everything to have one more extra node so as I already mentioned about the power management, um, while we were building this farm in, in the some point, we understand that sometimes when we continuously run automated testing in this uh, device lab, um, uh, the, the, the power, the battery of the device sometimes are um, getting used more than it's charging uh, from, from the uh, charging from the Mac machine. Basically, we uh, we come with a solution to use these um, pluggable USBs with the 60 watt power adapter, uh, and we use um, uh, these adapters to connect the phones to the to the Mac Minis. Another painful um, uh, point during this uh, building process was the network management. Basically, what um, uh, in the beginning we were using the Wi-Fi connection, so every device was connected to the Wi-Fi connection, and we were using the Wi-Fi network to uh, to have the internet connection for the device. But uh, as you already know, the Wi-Fi connections are not super stable. And sometimes we were facing uh, some issues uh, with the connectivity, uh, which forced us to think about uh, some solution that will provide a, a stable network for the, for the devices. For the iOS, it was very easy because uh, we have the native uh, USB triggering um, functionality, which allows uh, users to just um, uh, reverse the direction of the network and uh, give uh, network connection, the internet connection from the uh, Mac machine to the iPhone. For the Android, we, will, we, we come out with the solution of using uh, generated um, a script, which is basically doing the same for the Android. We just run this script before running the automation test, and, and it, it's actually doing exactly the same. It's connecting, the, like reversing the direction of the network, and basically Android phone getting the internet connection from the uh, from the Mac machine. So uh, if we uh, if we'll take a look at the um, overall picture of the pipeline that we are running on the, um, uh, on the Jenkins, uh, it will looks like the, like, look, look like this. Um, when you run, uh, when you run the, um, a new build in the Jenkins, uh, the first thing that the pipeline is doing, it's building the binary. If we are um, uh, based on the OS, uh, like it's Android or iOS, we are building specific um, pipeline, which is uh, giving us the binary. 
when we have the binary, we archive the binary and the keep the file in the master, master node. And when you run the test, which, what actually happening? For example, <clears throat> in our case, we have more than 2000 tests that we are running in this system. And when we click, when we are getting to the stage of run, run the test, this stage actually takes the all amount of the test and the dividing to the amount of the nodes. For example, if we have eight nodes, uh, it's dividing the whole suite to the eight parts and then pushing every, like each part to the one um, uh, node. Uh, basically here, I um, try to uh, like visualize everything. So we have, uh, in this case, an N group of the tests, which means we have N nodes. And every group of the tests are running on the one node. And after the run, uh, it's uh, generating the report files and sending it to the master node. And we are keeping these files in the master. And when every, <clears throat> When every node is ready uh, with the report files, we are generating the HTML report for the visual uh, for for having the visual reports. For the reports part, uh, we will um, take a look a bit later in the details how we are doing the reporting. Let's take a look actually uh, and um, uh, like closely inside the node. What happening uh, in the node? This is like all the actions that are happening inside every node per run. <clears throat> um, this is the part when we already get the group of the tests in the node and we are starting the running the test process. Basically, before the running the test, uh, we do the cleanup. Um, bef uh, like the first thing that we do is rebooting the device. When we run a lot of automation tests, we are experiencing some memory issues, uh, which is solved by rebooting the device. And uh, when the re device is rebooted, we are killing the previous Opium server if it's running. So basically, we check if the previous Opium server is still running, we just kill this process. And for, all, for Android only cases, we also check if generic script is running. This is the script that is reversing the network. We are killing them this uh, service. After this cleanup say, uh, uh, step, we are setting up the environment for the next run. Basically, we will run the Opium server to, up, to have it up and running. We run the generated service uh, for Android only to have this um, reversing network. And we have several like, um, mocking servers, which is uh, our app specific. And uh, this is one of the customization that we done. Basically, we mock a lot of services uh, to have more constant run and, uh, and fast test running. After the setup, um, setup stage, we just run all the tests that we have. When we um, finish this run, we are finalizing the, the build. Uh, we are stashing the report files the report files that are generating during the run. We are stashing the crash reports, all the reports that um, uh, concerning to the crashes. Uh, sometimes when we run the automation test, the application could crash. When application is crashing, we just capture of the, all the data uh, later to, to attach it to the report. We are stashing all the screenshots. We collect all this data and we are sending to the master node. And uh, in the end, in the master node, we will generate the overall report from the, all the nodes. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk a bit um, uh, detail, like in the details about the reporting. How are we actually customizing the reporting? For the reporting, we use Alu report. This is again open source and a free project that uh, this supports a lot of uh, programming languages, and you can use uh, for almost every, every uh, for every uh, programming language. So, but basically, we did a lot of like uh, customization in this. 
the Allure reporting framework it allows you to do a lot of customization. So basically right now we'll talk about the customization part that we did for us. <clears throat> The first thing um, that we did, it's screenshot attached. We did more stuff here. Uh, based on the experience, we started to collect, collect lots of information about the failures and attach it to the report. One of this information is the current logged in user information. To make it easy to, uh, to debug uh, later the failure, we keep the log, uh, logged in user information, the username, ID, email, and the key that were used during that session. Later, we can look up in the da database and understand the stage of the use, uh, user and uh, find out the conditions that were causing the, the failure. Beside this information, we also keep device information. As in the mobile farm, we have different type of the devices. And basically, we choose these devices based on our um, our users' uh, usage. So uh, we we just um, update these devices from time to time um, based on the usage. So here we also keep the information of the device that we're running during uh, during that session. So from this um, report, we can see that it was like for example Xiaomi A3 uh, phone, and we also attach the device ID because we have uh, several uh, phones. Uh, we could have uh, the same model, several ones. And of course, we are keeping here the branch that we're running uh, and uh, these mocking services, URL that we mocked, uh, later to be able to completely uh, duplicate the uh, scenario and debug the problem. Here you can um, think out of the box and keep any information that you have. Uh, it's easy to set up. You just pass from the Java to the reporting and the reporting will attach everything here. So um, right now I would like to show like, the part of the, our device lab. It looks like this. <clears throat> we have uh, devices attached to the to the lab when we have these two uh, report monitors. And uh, every time the run is finished, the report will be uh, regenerated and we always have the, the um, uh, updated version of the report. This is just, uh, just there for the keeping the attention on it and the people sitting next to it can pay attention and see if we have a problem they will see on, on the spot. Basically, this is uh, all that I wanted to share about the uh, mobile farm that we built in the, in, in the house. If you later would like to get more information and uh, want to uh, get in touch with me, feel free to ping me in the Twitter or in LinkedIn or just drop me an email. And I guess right now we'll switch um, uh, to the question and the answer session. I will be happy to answer any question you have regarding this topic.